Today's topic is a tough one. It's for anyone out there who is dealing with a deathbed situation. Maybe you yourself or a loved one is on their deathbed and you're starting to ask the question, what happens after I die? You know, it's one of those questions that maybe you don't think much about until you're faced with death. I know it's happened with me, with many of my loved ones, even in my own life when I was sick and the doctors said that they thought it was gonna take my life. Man, that's a scary situation. I wanna make sure that you know what the Bible has to say about one moment after you die. Here's the first thing, and this should give you encouragement. The Bible teaches that heaven is a real place. In heaven, there's no death or sorrow or pain. And that's really helpful to know if you're in the midst of sorrow or pain, or if you're on your deathbed. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 4, that he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. In my life, when I was going through my deathbed experience, I really would have been encouraged by these words that there is a place, that place is called heaven, and there's no more death or sorrow or crying or pain because for some of you right now, you're surrounded by that stuff. Here's the second thing. The Bible teaches that death is not the end of existence. The moment you die, you can be in the presence of God immediately. 2 Corinthians 5.8 says, Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. I don't know what you were taught growing up about this world, this life, or the afterlife, but the Bible is pretty clear there's more than just what we have here on the earth. Now that's really encouraging, but it's very important for all of us, especially for those of you who are in this situation, yourself or with a loved one, it's really important to understand this last truth. See, the Bible teaches that these powerful promises are only available to those who are saved. Now, if you've never heard of salvation before, here's what the Bible says about that. Salvation is ours the moment we respond to Jesus in faith. Here's some scripture to back that up. Romans 10, 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is really good news because it says that it's not about how good you are, how many good works you've performed. The Bible teaches that the only prerequisite for salvation is believing in Jesus. And Romans 3.22 says that we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes no matter who we are. Maybe you're reading these verses saying, I can't believe that someone could be saved simply by putting their faith in Jesus Christ. See, for many of us, we get the idea that we can only save ourselves, that deathbed confessions aren't a thing. There's no way that God would let that be a thing. But keep in mind that when Jesus himself was on the cross, while he was dying on the cross, a thief, which means he was a pretty terrible guy, a thief was on a cross next to him. And Jesus offered him the same thing I'm offering you today. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise but only because the thief put his faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if the thief could do that on the cross, then you can do that today, even right now on your deathbed. So if you've never done it, I invite you to pray a prayer just like this with a friend or a loved one. Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I know that you died on the cross and rose from the dead so that I could have life. I'm turning from my sin now and I'm turning to you in faith. I trust in you alone to forgive my sin and give me new life. Thank you for this free gift. Amen. The Bible says that if you trust in Jesus and come to him in faith, then you don't have to be afraid of what happens one moment after you die.